Hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Ikaw tingnan, hindi mo naman pala nakina, no? Oy, sabi ko nyo. Hello, Sir A. Shall we start?
Magandang araw, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, at sa iba pang lugar, iba pang bansa na uh, uh, natatanaw at naaabot ng uh, Peter A. Uh, Review Center. Uh, mabuhay tayong lahat. At um, magsisimula tayo sa, sa review na ito. We will begin this review uh, with you going to joinmyquiz.com and by entering the game code 564-479 you will be seeing uh, 25 questions all right one at a time 25 questions about facilitating learning so this evening or today kung ano man ang oras dyan sa inyo whatever the time is uh, wherever you are uh, you will be having a review on facilitating learning. And um, yours truly, uh, Martin Kit Guzman, will be facilitating this review. All right. So please go to joinmyquiz.com, enter the game code 564479. And uh, anyone from Facebook Live and uh, even the, the Zoom meeting participants may join this uh, quizzes activity, right? I'll be waiting for, I'll be waiting for uh, everyone to join this. Joinmyquiz.com, no space, all right? Joinmyquiz.com, game code is 564-479. We already have two participants, Miss Love and uh, Miss UEB uh, Oralde. Hello, uh, Madam. Hello, Mrs. Um, waiting for others. Facebook Live viewers, you may also join. Now we are three. Miss Maggie also joined. Facebook Live uh, users or Facebook Live viewers and uh, Zoom participants. You may join this uh, activity. I I prepared 25 facilitating learning questions, and every question, every item, uh, will be answered by you. Then, right after every uh, the presentation of correct answers, we will be discussing uh, those, especially theories and application on facilitating learning. One of the subjects, not just in education, uh, in uh, psychology and uh, guidance and counseling is uh, facilitating learning. Because when we talk about learning, it is a relative change in behavior. Right? And uh, through learning, uh, anyone, a learner, uh, can be able to, to change a behavior. Right? And learning is not just... Uh, about positive things, all right? And uh, when we talk about learning, kahit yung mga negatibong bagay na pwedeng matutunan, mangyayari. That's why uh, us, uh, educators, or future licensed teachers, should really be focusing on the application. Well, theory first, and then the application, followed by the application, uh, on how to facilitate learning. Because it is our duty it's our responsibility. Actually, it's our main task uh, for our students because we are the source of learning. Okay? Uh, we inspire them and at the same time, we ought uh, to teach them uh, the, the good things, the nice lessons, whether it be uh, about academics or values, uh, whatever that is, as long as you are facilitating learning well, as long as you know that you are teaching good things. And when I say good things, I mean values and uh, correct correct uh, knowledge and uh, correct information. And you are doing your job well. Right? So we will be discussing facilitating learning tonight or this afternoon. 
or this morning. Ano man ang oras sa inyo? Anong oras man kayo uh, maaabot itong uh, review na ito? So right now, we have 12, 12 participants from uh, both Facebook Live and uh, Zoom meeting. Now it's 13, make it 14. Tingnan natin kung maabot ng 20. If it reaches 20, we will begin. Pero kung uh, lagpas na sa oras, it's already 7.10 uh, in the evening um, there in the Philippines. So pag uh, 7.15 at uh, hindi pa rin maabot ng 20, we will begin. All right, we're just waiting for one more participant and we will start this. <clears throat> All right, let's start. <clears throat> Okay, again, uh, to those who still want to join this review, just go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the game code 564479. All right. Uh -huh, we have 13 participants from Zoom. Uh, may I call on someone to lead the prayer before we start? Anyone? May mag volunteer ba dito? Sir A, sino pwede nating uh, uh, i-ask to lead the prayer before we start the, the review? I'll just call someone. Okay, Ma'am Evelyn, hello? Good evening, Ma'am Evelyn. Hello, sir. Good evening. Uh, will you please lead the prayer? Write short prayer. Lang. Okay po, sir. Thank you. Sige po. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life, good health, love, protection, and guidance. Thank you for this opportunity and tonight's review through Teacher A with who continue imparting their knowledge toward us, the reviewers. Bless them, Lord, with good health and happy life as they continue doing great things. Bless us also, Lord, the reviewers, with wisdom to understand every concept and techniques as we prepare for our let. Bless us, O Lord, with courage hope and positivity as we live our life in the new normal. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening po. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Evelyn. Uh, very Welcome nice. po, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Let us begin our review. 
Sabi ko nga, diba, every time that I will be the one who will uh, facilitate the review here on uh, Teacher A, uh, we will uh, start, we will begin with uh, something to at least motivate or inspire you, right? And uh, allow me to start. With, um, when this pandemic happened, a lot of new or uh, not so familiar terms uh, were encountered by the people, right? Whether it be the, the medical practitioners or uh, the government, uh, public servants who are talking to the public, uh, we have encountered several terms that were new to us or not so familiar to us uh, when the pandemic happened. And mind you, it's already a year. A year has already passed uh, since the start of the global pandemic. And uh, sadly, uh, in the Philippines, uh, medyo malayo pa, medyo marami pa tayong kailangan gawin para uh, matapos itong problema ito. While in other countries, in other nations, uh, the rollout of the vaccines have, has been uh, the news. Uh, unfortunately, however, in, in the Philippines, marami pang problema na kailangan mga solusyonan, kailangan mga uh, i-address para para masolusyonan talaga, para matapos ang uh, pandemyang ito sa ating bansa. Anyway, going back, um, we have encountered a lot of terms di ba? Uh, during this pandemic. And one of those terms was social distance. Right? You have been hearing over and over uh, when, when this a uh, pandemic uh, began, uh, this term, social distancing. And uh, when, you, uh, when you hear this word, social distancing, or this term, social distancing, or social distancing, uh, I believe, this is just my assumption, but I believe most of you would say na uh, kailangan maglayo-layo. Kailangan walang contact. Kailangan kahit nag-uusap kayo, malayo kayo sa, sa isa't isa at least one meter or two meters away from each other. Okay? And uh, it would be better if talagang hindi kayo magkasama, hindi kayo magkakabi. Uh, parang kung kayang pigilan ng pag-uusap, pigilan na lang. That was social distancing for most of us, especially when it was presented uh, to the public. All right? That's, that's one of the terms. So, when we talk about uh, social distancing, uh, just like what I said a while ago, uh, people would think that they should avoid physical contacts. Correct? Be correct, right? Yeah. Uh, it was the advice of the medical uh, practitioners, the scientists, those who are responsible in fighting uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. You have to avoid physical contacts. Because the pandemic is deadly. Uh, anytime, whenever there is uh, a contact uh, between you and another person, the spread of the virus uh, will not be stopped. It will keep on continuing. Uh, that's what the, the medical uh, health practitioners have said. However, this is just my personal. Sorry, nagkaka, oh yeah. This is just my personal opinion. I don't know if you will believe with me. I don't know if you will agree with me. But it seems like uh, we are interchanging the definition or the meaning of social distancing and physical distancing. Because if the, the only thing that the medical practitioners are telling us, which is which is to stay away from each other. Do not have physical contacts like this. Physical contacts. Kung yan ang sinasabi, I think we should call it just physical distancing and not social distancing. My dear friends, my dear educators, when we talk about social distancing, we also include the way we communicate with each other. 
we include the feelings that we utter, the feelings that we show to another person whenever we communicate with them. And I don't think, I don't think those things will help if we stop it, if we stop those things, showing our emotions, communicating with others, if we stop those, I don't think the coronavirus will be stopped. It's just physical distancing, not social distancing, right? Physical distancing basically is trying to stay away from another person physically, but it doesn't tell you, it doesn't say that you don't have to talk to the person anymore. But hanggat may pandemia, hanggat may coronavirus, hanggat may COVID-19, uh, hindi naman sinasabi doon na uh, tigilan mo ang pakikipag-usap, tigilan mo ang pakikipagkapwa-tao. Hindi yun ang sinasabi doon. Ang sinasabi lang ng mga doktor, ng mga scientific ko ay lumayo muna sa isa't isa, pero pwede pa rin makipag-usap, pwede pa rin dumama, pwede pa rin maging tao at pwede pa rin makipagkapwa-tao. Communication is important. It's very important. Sa panahon ngayon, it's one of the most important things. Makipagkamustahan. Magtanong kung ano nangyayari sa kaibigan, sa kapamilya. This is why Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, Facebook Messenger, any platform that will allow us to communicate with one another, especially uh, kapag malalayo tayo sa isa't isa, napakahalaga ng mga yan. And I don't think we have to call this protocol as social distancing. Because when we talk about social distancing, communication will also be lost. Social. Diba? Pag sinabing social, it's the interaction among people. Right? It should just be physical distance. Again, communication is the key. And in this time of pandemic, we can still be human. Pwede pa rin maging tao. Pwede pa rin maging tao na dumadama. Pwede pa rin maging tao na may ipinapadama sa kapwa. So let us take note of this. The protocol should be called physical distancing and not social distancing. Because there is a need to physically distance ourselves from others. Again, because there is a need to physically distance ourselves from others. But social and emotional connectedness become more necessary than ever. Tagalog, may pangangailangan na lumayo tayo sa isa't isa ng physical. Pero ang pakikipagkapwa, ang pagdama, ang pagpapadama, mas mahalaga ngayon. Higit sa lahat ngayon. Ngayong panahon ng pandemya, mas kailangan natin mangumusta, mas kailangan natin makipag-usap, mas kailangan natin ipakita ang malasakit sa bawat isa. Maaaring magkakalayo tayo ngayon, pero hindi matatapos doon yun. Hindi nun mapipigilan ang pagiging tao natin, ang pagiging makatao natin. Tao na nangungumusta. Tao na may pagpapahalaga sa buhay ng iba. Now is the time that we need to feel more human than ever. Kaya yung simpleng tanong na kumusta ka, especially sa mga uh, kasama natin uh, na mga nagre-review ngayon sa Teacher A o kahit saan mga review center, yung mga nakatapos na ng, uh, ng education nila at naghihintay na lang ng exam. I know how devastating it is uh, when uh, PRC uh, announced that there is another postponement for the L LED or the LED. And it's sad. I feel what you feel. It's very frustrating. Um, maybe the, the pressure uh, keeps on piling up. Siguro yun yung mga nararamdaman natin ngayon. And uh, the simple question like how are you or kumusta ka would help. And uh, whenever a person shows concern, 
Pagka nagpapakita ng malasakit ang kapwa, lalo na sa mga gaya natin na nafo-frustrate, na nagkakaroon ng problema, na hindi naiintindihan kung ano ang mga nangyayari. Maraming tanong na kailangan ng sagot. Ang simpleng pangangumusta sa kanya ay maituturing ng isa sa pinakamahalagang bagay na maibibigay mo sa kanya. Kaibigan, kapamilya, kahit sino man yan, kapag ka sinsero ka sa pangumusta mo at mo talagang uh, uh, ipakita ang iyong malasakit, malaking bagay. Isang malaking panalo yon para sa kapwa. And uh, to be human is innate to all of us. Whatever the situation is, whether there's a pandemic or not, to be human is innate to all of us. And that only means that, only means that uh, lessons, advices, stories, tamang kwentuhan, uh, to be more concerned and mindful of each other are very important nowadays. Now is the time that we need to feel more human than ever. And uh, as educators, um, the, the lesson on social emotional learning is very important. Uh, hindi lang siya basta values formation, pero ipinapakita mo rin na sincero ka uh, sa, sa nararamdaman uh, ng, ng mga mag-aaral mo. Right? And tulad ngayon, uh, yung mga nagre-review, uh, alam ko may mga huminto muna dahil uh, na postpone na naman ang letter ang let ang LET no may announcement na naman ng PRC and uh, again we feel you uh, and from the bottom of our hearts uh, we want to tell you that it will not stop you okay we believe that it will not stop you we believe that still na na, na po postpone lang napapatagal lang napoprolong lang pero dadating at dadating yung panahon na masasabi mo esensyado ka na at handa ka na na magsilbi sa mga mag-aaral right napoprolong lang pero dadating at dadating yung moment you will have your time tandaan hindi imposible ang pagpapakatao at kikipagkapwa tao ngayong panahon ng pandemya alright now on to our review Simulan na natin ang review. Ready na guys? Uh, wala akong Facebook ngayon. So uh, from the Zoom uh, participants, ready na ba tayo? Shall we start? Anyone? Um, okay, let's begin. Which theory operates on the stimulus response principle, which means all the behaviors are caused by external stimuli? Contextual theory, behaviorist theory, cognitive theory, or constructivist theory. These theories are, are, are learning theories, but uh, when we talk about stimulus response principle, uh, where does it fall under contextual theory, behaviorist, cognitive, or constructivist? sumasagot ng behaviorist theory, may isang sumasagot ng constructivist, may isang cognitive. Uh, we're still waiting for eight participants. Hindi na ba sila sasagot? Let's end the question now. Okay, one more minute. Uh, 
uh, mabuhay sa mga nanonood sa Facebook Live ngayon. Uh, wala akong uh, Facebook. Hindi ko, hindi ko kayo nakikita. So, uh, I just want to greet everyone watching. <laughs> Okay. That's okay. One more minute. Uh, we will end the function to show you the correct answer. Part view. Let's see. 16 said uh, behavior theory. Only three said cognitive. One said uh, constructivist. Nobody answered. Contextual theory. All right, let's end the question now. Okay. So, as you can see on the leaderboard, maraming nakakuha ng score, meaning the correct answer is uh, behavior theory or behaviorist theory, which was answered by 16 participants. All right, let us discuss what a behavior theory is or behaviorist theory or behaviorism, right? When we talk about uh, behaviorism or behaviorist theory or behavioral learning theory, uh, whether in education or in psychology, it is a concept that focuses on how students learn, how, right? It answers the question, how? Right? So this learning theory states that behaviors are learned from the environment and says that innate or inherited factors have very little influence on behavior. Common example of behaviorism is positive reinforcement. The question, if you go back, is uh, stimulus response. All right? So whenever there is something that is presented to the learner, uh, uh, behaviorists or behaviorism or behavior learning theory say that uh, uh, there will be a response from the learner, all right? So the environment is playing a vital role in the learning uh, system or in the learning mechanism. And so again, uh, innate or inherited factors have very little influence on behavior, but instead it's the environment. When the environment presents a stimulus, all right? Whenever a, an environment presents something to the learner, the learner will eventually respond to it. Okay. So that is what uh, the, the behaviorists or uh, the behaviorism is telling us about learning. Right? If you have a question, just uh, um, raise hand button. If you have questions, just feel free to uh, ask. Let's move on to the next question. Teacher in her social studies class accompanies her discussion with interesting visual aids. He strongly believes that students learn better when lessons are presented with images, real or imagined. Or real or imagined, aside from mere lecture method. Which learning theory does she? Sorry, uphold. That's not upholds, but uphold. A. Dual coding theory. B. Information processing theory. Meaningful, meaningful reception learning. Or D. Social cognitive theory.
write 20, 20 part 21, participants have already answered, waiting for 7. ang sagot. Uh, eight participants said dual coding. Six said information processing. Seven said meaningful reception. Only one said social cognitive. So ano kaya ang pinakatamang sagot dyan? Or no. Ano kaya ang amang sagot? Answer is dual coding theory. Okay, let us explain why dual coding theory is the correct answer there. Um, when we talk about dual coding theory uh, in, in learning mechanism or learning system, it is uh, the manner of combining words and visuals such as pictures, diagrams, graphic organizers, and so on. So, kahit anong subject yan, whether it be science, social studies, English, uh, math, Kahit anong subject niyan, if you are applying dual coding in your lessons, uh, you are using visual aids. You are presenting pictures, you are presenting uh, diagrams, whatever. Because dual coding theory believes that um, uh, teaching uh, in combination with presenting uh, Photos or pictures or diagrams in, in your lesson will help the learners uh, absorb uh, the lesson, right? So the idea is to provide two different representations of the information, both visual, yung picture na pinapakita mo, and verbal, ikaw mismo, the teacher who is explaining the lesson to the learners to help students understand the information better. And so if that teacher, the social studies teacher, was uh, presenting visual aids like photos, maps, maybe, for example, uh, and, and other uh, materials that she believes uh, will be helpful for her lesson, for her students to understand the, the lesson better, then she is applying the dual coding theory. Let's move on to the next question. Ms. Rita is an excellent physical education teacher. She started teaching volleyball in her grade class. Despite all her efforts, her class does not seem to learn how to play the game. But law of learning was disregarded. Despite all her efforts, her class does not seem to learn how to play. What law of learning was this required?
we already have 30 participants here. We're waiting for nine participants to answer. Here's the full question. Rita is an excellent physical education teacher. She started teaching volleyball to her grade two class. Take note, huh? grade two class. Despite all her efforts, her class does not seem to learn how to play the game. What law of learning was disregarded? Last one minute. Seven participants have yet to answer. One more minute for you guys. The question is what law learning was disregarded? Sabi dito, nagturo daw ng volume si Ms. Rita sa grade 2. Pero, sa sa kabila ng uh, effort niya, sa kabila ng uh, pagsisikap niya ng tuto, uh, ng maayos, yung volleyball sa grade 2 uh, pupils, hindi nila natutunan talaga kung ano laruin ng volleyball. So, anong law, law of learning, ang na-disregard? That is the question. Okay, we will end this question now, but first let's see the chart view that we use. Law of readiness, ang sagot, ang marami, 17 said, it's law of readiness. Let's see. The correct answer is law of readiness. Yeah, magtanong nga tayo sa participants sa Zoom. Um, teacher Yulene Venus. Hello. Hello, Teacher Yulene. Teacher Yulene, are you there? Uh, be before I discuss the, the correct answer, Magtatanong talang muna ako sa participants. Hello, Teacher Yulene. Nandyan ka ba? Wala. Um, sige. Ay, hindi gumagana ang kanyang microphone. Um, Mail participant naman tayo. Sir Marco, hello. Hello, Sir Marco. Anyone who would like to, to share his or her answer, especially dun sa mga nakatama, law of readiness, bakit law of readiness ang sagot? Or I discuss it. Anyone? Nobody? Okay. Uh, the reason why uh, law of readiness was the correct answer, it's because... Uh, uh, there is an assumption on that uh, situation. Uh, on that situation, there is an assumption that um, grade two pupils, uh, grade two pupils, pa lang ito, and uh, it seems like um, there are more simple skills that are needed or that were needed to be presented to them before they play volleyball. Okay, 
Ano-ano kaya yung mga skill, mga simpleng skill na, na magaling matutunan ng mga grade 2 pupils na pwede mong i-present sa kanila bago ka magturo ng volleyball. Na pwede magpasahan muna. Uh, pwede uh, use muna sa kanila yung bola, kung ano yung mga pwede gawin doon. Uh, bago sila makapaglaro ng, ng full-blown na uh, volleyball or kahit hindi full-blown, basta yung, yung rallying ng bola, palitan ng bola sa, sa bawat team. Um, assumption was, the assumption was, it will be hard for the great pupils to, to do that, to play that. All right? So when we talk about love readiness, it is basically a law that states that learning is dependent upon the readiness of the learners to act which facilitates the strengthening of the bond between the stimulus and the response, all right? Uh, Edward Lee Thorndike uh, discussed it in his uh, uh, stimulus response theory of learning. So in that case, kahit anong uh, pagsisika pa ni teacher na ituro yung lesson na yon, kung hindi naman handa hindi handa ang katawan ng mag-aaral, kung hindi handa ang uh, isip ng mag-aaral, mahihirapan talaga sa teacher na ituro yung lesson na yan. Alright? Now let's move on to the next item or to the next question. Teaching a physical education teacher demonstrate, demonstrates that new skill to be learned so that his students can watch him and later reproduce the skill. But learning theory is associated with the situation. Dual code or dual coding, information processing, schema learning, or social learning. So the teacher demonstrates a new skill. So, pinakita niya, he was doing the skill. Uh, he was showing it to the students. Students would watch him and then he asked the students to reproduce or to do what he did. One of classic learning theory ang ginamit teacher uh, in this situation. Dual coding, information processing, schema learning, or social learning. sabi ng social learning, marami rin nagsabi ng schema learning, dalawa lang ang nagsabi ng dual coding at processing. So, let's see if the correct answer really is either schema or social. Let's reveal
correct answer is uh, social learning theory. Okay? Let's, let's explain why social learning theory. No? Uh, when we talk about social learning theory, it is a uh, a theory of learning process and social behavior, which proposes that new behaviors can be acquired by observing and imitating others. In the case of that situation, the teacher was uh, presenting the skill, all right? The teacher was presenting the skill to the students and he told the students that after I present to you the skill, you have uh, to reproduce the skill. So whatever I did, you have to reproduce it. So uh, it means that students need to observe the teacher and at the same time, they need to process this uh, uh, for them to imitate the exact skill that the teacher did, all right? So in addition to the observation of behavior, learning also occurs through the observation of rewards and punishments. And it is a process known as the vicarious reinforcement. Okay? So social learning yun. Kapag ka may ginawa si teacher at ginaya ng isang estudyante, ibig sabihin, uh, ginagamit niya ang um, uh, or he or she is applying the social learning theory uh, on that kind of uh, learning environment. Right? Let's move on. <laughs> is always fearful of freely roaming dogs but does not find dogs in a pen or on a leash. What feature of classical conditioning is exhibited? Takot daw si Patrice sa aso or sa mga nagkumagalang aso pero hindi siya natatakot kapag nakatali siya or nakatutok ang aso. So, di ba? Uh, anong classical conditioning ang pinapakita sa sitwasyon na ito? Hindi natin, ha? Patrice is always fearful of freely roaming dogs. Takot siya sa mga naggagalang aso. But she is not afraid or she does not mind dogs in a pen or on a leash. Pag nakakulong or nakatali ng aso, hindi siya nagpap. What feature of classical conditioning is exhibited? Discrimination, extinction, generalization, or practice? said discrimination, five said extinction, two said generalization, two said practice. So let's see what the correct answer is. Allow me to reveal it. Okay. 
Okay. The correct answer is discrimination. Very good. Uh, to those 12 participants who got the correct answer, very good. Uh, it is discrimination. Back in discrimination. Again, let us talk about the, uh, the situation. Uh, the person was afraid of uh, dogs who are roaming around, right? That are roaming around. But uh, the person wouldn't mind the dogs if they are uh, in a pen or on a leash. Pag nakatali or yung ahulog. So, uh, if that is the situation, then it is called discrimination, right? Discrimination is defined in psychology as the ability to, to respond differently to different stimuli. So, the first stimuli, uh, the first uh, uh, thing that was presented was uh, dogs that are moving freely, all right? And the response is for Patrice to be afraid of those dogs. Uh, the second uh, thing that was presented, second stimuli was, uh, sorry, second stimulus was uh, uh, dogs that are in a pen or dogs that are on a leash, nakatali or nakakulong. And uh, iba ulit ang response ni Patrice, hindi siya natatakot, she doesn't mind it. All right? So that is discrimination. The person is able to discriminate, all right? person is able to discriminate uh, uh, the differences between uh, the two stimuli. The first stimuli, naglalakad yung mga aso, naggagalat, takot siya. The second one is nakakulong, hindi siya natatakot. Right? So there is no anxiety, there is no fear uh, whenever she sees dogs that are in a pen. So that is what you call discrimination learning. So the person is able to discriminate the difference between two stimuli right so to those 12 participants who got the correct answer very good next question mm -hmm. music teacher is careful in planning activities for each lesson he praises liberally and rewards correct answers. What kind of learning is exhibited? Classical, meaningful, operant conditioning, or social learning? Classical conditioning, meaningful learning, operant conditioning, or social learning? said it's opera conditioning, only two said classical, one said meaningful learning. Okay, let's reveal the answer. Kanina, 21 ang sumagot, 20 na kayo. Tanabang sasagot. 
Ada? Oke. Okay. Okay, the correct answer is upper conditioning. It was uh, the the theory of Burroughs. Uh, Skinner or BF Skinner. Okay. Um, let, let us explain why uh, upper conditioning was the correct answer. If you remember in the question, the music teacher was giving praises to the students and uh, she was really uh, into rewarding. Okay. So when you hear or encounter the words praises, rewards, reinforcements, punishments, even, it's automatically operant conditioning. Okay, so the, the, the learning theory being applied by the teacher kapag ka gumagamit siya ng mga ganoong paraan is operant conditioning as uh, proposed by BF or Burroughs Skinner. And uh, operant conditioning, sometimes referred to as the instrumental, instrumental conditioning, is a method of learning that employs rewards and punishments for behavior. Through operant conditioning, an association is made between the behavior and the consequence. So kapag tama ang sagot ko, nare-reward na ako ni teacher. Or sasabihin niyang magaling ako. So that is a good example of uh, operant conditioning. That is a good example of a situation, a learning environment that uh, uses or applies operant conditioning in learning. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Which of the theories of learning sets or states that learning skills are hierarchically arranged? Which of the theories of learning sets or states that learning skills are hierarchically arranged? Some said meaningful, some said social cognitive, some said theory of instruction. All right. One last, last one minute. Any other point you want to ask? The Mawasa and Isa. Okay, let's review the correct answer now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, the correct answer is uh, commutative learning. Again, uh, a theory that presents or states that learning skills are hierarchically arranged. It is uh, commutative learning. Uh, basically, cognitive learning is a, uh, a proposal of the cognitive process by which we accumulate knowledge and abilities that serve as building blocks for subsequent cognitive development. So, kapag kasi nabi nating uh, cognitive learning, may uh, para siyang procedural, para siyang sa may building. Uh, it 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 starts with uh, simple things, all right, for subsequent. Cognitive development, cumulative learning and educational theory, uh, which was proposed by uh, Gagnier uh, in 1968. He was uh, the one who, who coined or uh, proposed the term cumulative learning theory on the basis of the assumption that intellectual skills can be broken down into simpler skills. Okay, so pagka encounter niyo yung building blocks or simple, simpler skills or broken down, those terms will automatically be under cognitive learning, right? Let's move on to the next question. Which of the following the following best describes what meaningful learning is. A. When what, <coughs> when what is to be learned. When what is to be learned is new and easy for the students. B. Materials presented are difficult and challenging to the students. C. When the materials to be learned is learned are related to what students learn. Or D, students find the lessons easy and relevant to what was assigned to them. Okay, let us reveal the answer. Okay, that's my 4,800 points. The correct answer is uh, when the material to be learned is related to what students already know or learned. Yeah. When we talk about meaningful learning, it refers to the concept that the learned knowledge is fully understood by the individual. So, it to be known, right? uh, it's already meaningful to the learner and that the individual knows how that specific fact relates to other stored facts. Meron tayong ibang examples dito mamaya, papakita natin. Uh, uh, for us to fully understand what meaningful learning is. Basta, uh, it only means that the lesson or the knowledge is fully understood by the learner. He already, or he or she uh, already uh, understands fully uh, the, the knowledge or the, the lesson. Okay, so that's uh, a meaningful learning experience for the learner. Okay, and uh, isa pa dyan, uh, the learner uh, would uh, be able to 
to know how those specific facts relate to other facts that have been stored already. Okay? Uh, what meaningful learning is. Next. Taurus, it's already 8.10. Okay, Rita, isn't he remembers dates and events in history? What competent, oh, I'm sorry, what component of the LEM does Rita have? Rita easily remembers dates and events in history. What component of LEM does uh, Rita have? LEM means long term memory. Creative thinking, critical thinking, reflective thinking, or logical thinking. By the way, uh, uh, we encourage you to practice how to answer uh, with, how should I say this, with accuracy, but at the same time, uh, with, uh, with uh, a reasonable speed, right? So be accurate in answering. Siguraduhin na tama ang sagot. Pero dapat, um, you are still mindful of the time, right? So, fast as you can, but make sure that uh, whenever you're answering uh, in, in left, whenever you're answering, dapat sigurado dun sa sarap. Ngayon, dalawang pressure talaga dyan. The first pressure is time. Laman mo ang oras. The second is uh, the correctness of your answers nakaka-pressure talaga yung dalawang elemento na yun. Pero, uh, kaya nga tayo gumagawa nito, kaya nga tayo nag-review. Hindi lang naman yung mga lesson kasi actually, para mag-aralan ng kapag-aralan uh, nito eh. Uh, mas mahalagang uh, bigyan ng pansin yung skill. Right? Yung skill in taking the test. Not just the knowledge, it's not just the information that you have to take in, but it is also a manner of taking the examination. Naniniwala ako na ang test at science ay hindi dahil wala kang alam doon sa exam. No, I don't think so. Pinag-aralan mo yun ng apat na taon, nag-review ka pa. Pero, ang test at science ay nagmimula yan doon sa fear of the unknown. Yeah. Unknown uh, meaning uh, kinakabahan ka for for or for the reason na baka mali, baka mabagal ka, yung mga gano'n, diba? But uh, we are doing this, we are practicing how to use uh, with accuracy and with its equal uh, amount of time. Right? So, kaya natin yun. Again, uh, what uh, component of long-term memory does Rita have if she remembers dates and events in history lessons, creative thinking, Critical thinking, reflective thinking, or logical thinking. Parami nang sabi ng reflective thinking. 14. Waiting for one more uh, participant to answer. Usually it's 21. Sa pang hindi sumasagot. Let's reveal the answer now. All right, tatlo pa rin ang may 5-4. The correct answer, of course, is reflective thinking. Reflective uh, thinking or reflective learning is a form of education in which the student reflects upon their learning experiences. A theory about reflective learning cites it as intentional and complex processes that recognize the role of social context and experience. Social context, uh, history lessons. Uh, reflective learning is really important for subjects like social studies, especially when the lessons are about uh, going back uh, to, to the past past events, 
uh, students, ito yung importante dahil hindi lang basta nagkakabisa ng pecha, hindi lang nagkakabisa ng tao. Pero mahalaga dito in reflective learning uh, is uh, the learner remembers what happened during that period of that lesson. At the same time, uh, the learner uh, is trying to dig deep about what happened, about those events uh, that happened in the past. Hindi lang nagiging kabisote yung estudyante. Uh, inagamit niya rin yung uh, pagkakataon na yun, yung learning experience na yun, para may ma-realize. And that is true reflective learning. Hindi ka lang nagkakabisa, hindi mo lang basta tinatandaan, pero lumalalim din yung pagkatuto mo dahil dun sa mga nangyari na yun. So, reflective learning uh, technique or uh, reflective learning theory is really applicable to lessons uh, that are about uh, history. Social studies, magandang ginagamit ng teacher ito. Sa mga social studies major na, magandang ginagamit ng teacher ito ng reflective learning theory uh, for your students. Because you are not just teaching your students uh, to, to, to memorize the events, uh, the key persons, and uh, the dates, no? and places, hindi naman ganun eh. Ababaw na kapag gaganan na lang tinuturo. Pero dahil uh, pinapakita mo dito yung role of the social context and the experience pinapakita mo doon, especially kapag uh, hindi ganun kagaganda yung mga nangyari sa nakaraan, pinapakita mo doon na hindi na dapat mangyari ito kasi uh, may mga bagay na kailangan gawin. May mga bagay na na uh, kailangan uh, pagtunan ng pansin para hindi na maulit ang mga masasamang nangyari sa nakaraan. Ngayon, kung tinturo mo naman yung mga uh, magagandang nangyari sa nakaraan at uh, and the motivation uh, uh, from the teacher is it should happen again or it should keep on happening uh, even uh, in our present situation uh, on the uh, may mga mahalagang bagay na kailangan para magpatuloy yung mga magandang bagay. And those things can be achieved through reflective learning. The Earth Sciences just completed the unit of the sun. As she recognizes her next unit on the other stars, uses the sun as a frame of reference. What view of learning was used? Discovery learning, informative learning, meaningful learning, or transfer learning. The earth science has just completed a unit on the sun. As she recognizes her next unit on other stars, she uses the sun as a frame of reference. What view of learning was used? one minute. Okay, hati sa dalawa. May nagsabing discovery, may nagsabing transfer, tatlo naman nagsabing meaningful, sa lang nagsabing informative. Take nota, 
he uses he uses the sun as a frame of reference because the next lesson will be in stars and uh, we all know that uh, sun is uh, sun is an example of a star the nearest star to our planet earth is the sun so ginamit ni teacher the reference ang sun to present the next lesson which is sparks ano kaya ang tamang sagot dyan full informative discovery or transfer of learning alright let's end the question now If you can still remember, uh, all right. The correct answer is meaningful learning. If you can still remember, yung uh, sinabi ko kanina, no? um, uh, uh, the the learner knows how to uh, the the learners. Uh, the, I'm sorry, the learner knows how that specific fact relates to other stored facts. So if you are the teacher and you will introduce the new lesson, which is STAR, uh, gagamitin mo daw eh. Gagamitin mo yung SUN na natutunan na ng mga bata uh, doon sa previous lesson. So ginamit mo yung SUN na natutunan na ng mga bata sa previous lesson as your frame of reference. So, ibig sabihin nun, it is already, uh, you are already using meaningful learning because SUN has already been learned. Siguro na-test na yun, nakapagbigay na ng uh, quiz, nakapagbigay na ng at ibang exercises at uh, na-realize na ni teacher na uh, sun as a lesson has already been uh, has, has already been learned by the learners, right? And uh, it is it is a, a technique for the teacher, for the earth science teacher to use that lesson to associate or to make it the frame of reference for the next one. So, she's applying meaningful learning. So, kapag sinabi ko ni teacher, halimbawa, the sun is a form of star. Right? And in our past lesson, we learned that sun is ganyan-ganyan, uh, blah, 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 etc., etc. And uh, doon, nagsisimula yung panibago uh, learning experience. Pero, uh, ginamit ni teacher yung technique, yung meaningful learning uh, application because the previous lesson has already been learned and it is somehow related, the fact is somehow related to, to the next ones, right? Which is next question. Uh, which is an application of cognitive approach to motivation. A, explain the reasons for studying the topic. B, create a supportive classroom climate for, for students. C, provide clear and prompt feedback on assignments or keeping lessons with valid techniques. Cognitive approach to motivation. Explain the reasons for studying the topic. Create a supportive classroom climate for students. Provide clear and prompt feedback on assignments or begin lessons with challenging questions and things like this.
talk about cognitive or cognition. Uh, it's about the mental processes. So, ano dyan? Ano sa mga choices na yan? Uh, may kinalaman sa mental processes. Take the reasons. Create a supportive classroom climbing. Provide the clear and prompt feedback. Or begin lessons with challenging questions. Lahat naman yan, magiging pagkawain, magiging practices yan. No? Pero ano dyan yung may cognitive approach or motivation? Okay. Hey. Uh-huh. 19 pa lang ang sumasagot. Okay, magkintay pa tayo sa at least. Ito pa. Isa pang participant to answer. Again, all those I'm sorry, I was muted pala. All those answers are good practices. Diba? All those uh, practices are good uh, behaviors in the classroom. However, uh, the question is the cognitive approach to motivation. And uh, sabi ko nga, I don't know if you heard me, but sabi ko kanina, cognitive or cognition, any uh, cognitive application to, uh, to education or to learning has something to do with mental processes kita ka ng uh, cognitive approach to motivation, it means that you are explaining uh, the reason. Pakita mo yung dahilan kung bakit pinag-aaralan yung uh, lesson na yun. Uh, supportive classroom climate is, yes, it is a good practice, but it doesn't uh, show an application of cognitive approach. It could be an effective approach because support means uh, 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 means that uh, it could mean uh, an emotional support for the student. Uh, another thing is uh, providing a clear prompt and uh, feedback on assignments. Uh, motivation. Okay, so motivation. So dapat simula pa lang ng lesson yun. So pagka-assignment na yan, hindi na yan motivation. And uh, letter D, uh, you have to begin lessons with uh, challenging questions and uh, conf conflicting events. Ayan. Uh, although, although this can be good, ito, no? magandang sagot sana siya. I understand the nine participants who answered this. But, uh, it may be applicable to higher levels. Uh, it can be an, a cognitive approach uh, to motivation. However, uh, it may not be applicable to all. Uh, so, this may be the best answer because you are starting the lesson, you are motivating them by explaining the reasons, reasons for studying the specific lesson. I wouldn't challenge actually those nine participants who answered letter D. They may be correct. It's just that siguro questionable yung, uh, yung kung applicable ba siya sa lahat. So when we talk about cognition, it is the mental processes, diba? mental activity, including thinking, remembering, learning, and using language. Uh, when we apply a cognitive approach to learning and teaching, we focus on the understanding of information and uh, concepts. Kaya nga, ipinapaintindi mo na agad sa mga estudyante mo kung bakit kailangan pag-aralan yung topic na yun as motivating. Next question. We only have 30 minutes left. For this review, students of Mrs. Reyes were not able to learn the concepts that she presented yesterday, so she taught the same concepts again, but this time using a different teaching method. What principle of learning was applied? A. The concept 
should be presented in varied and different ways. Efforts or effort was put forth and tasks are challenging. T. Learning by doing is more effective than just by sitting and listening. Or D. Learning is aided by formulating and asking questions. Okay, let's end the question now. Alas lahat, sagot ay uh, letter E. Uh, giveaway question ito. No? Okay, in the situation, kita-kita naman kung ano yung ginawa ni teacher para matutunan na magpapa tayo uh, yung lesson. But the correct answer is letter A. Uh, in the situation, because the students were not able to learn uh, the lesson uh, fully, uh, uh, that was presented yesterday, uh, ang ginawa ni uh, Mrs. Reyes, tinuro niya ulit yung lesson. Pero, iba naman. Uh, iba naman yung approach niya. Gumamit siya ng ibang uh, methodology. Gumamit siya ng ibang uh, technique to present the lesson. So in that case, of course, the correct answer should be letter A. It should be uh, lessons or concepts should be uh, presented in varied and different Okay, so give away question ito. Next question. Alvin is a transferee and feels uneasy with his new school. His teacher is very accommodating, warm, and caring. Alvin felt comfortable with the teacher display. I'm sorry, with the teacher's display of genuine warmth. The teacher is consistent in his manner. Alvin began to associate school with the teacher's warmth, which theory is being illustrated. Meaningful, operant conditioning, classical conditioning, or observational learning. Medyo tricky ang tanong, ha? Uh, basahin pa buti, pag-isip.
again, the question is, Alvin is a transferee and feels uneasy with his new school. Nakabahan siya, hindi siya comfortable, and his teacher is very accommodating, warm, and caring. Alvin felt comfortable with the teacher's display of genuine warmth, and the teacher is consistent in his manner, and Alvin began to associate school with the teacher's warmth. Alvin began to associate school with the teacher's warmth. Take note, which theory is being illustrated? Let's see, chart view, classical conditioning ang may pinakaparating sagot. Tignan natin kung tama yan. May nagsabing operant conditioning. Okay, Ethel Rose is in the lead. Shalom. And the correct answer is operant conditioning. And so... Yung, yung pagiging uh, warm, pagiging caring, pagiging accommodating ni teacher uh, uh, shows uh, it, 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 it is rewarding for, for the student uh, being new to the, to the environment, to the school. Uh, yung pinapakita ng uh, teacher uh, being very accommodating, warm and caring is uh, rewarding. Uh, the, the student, Alvin, feels a uh, rewarding feeling whenever the teacher shows uh, accommodating, warm, and caring uh, personality from the teacher. <coughs> so schedules of reinforcement, it is a fixed interval schedule. Nakalagay doon, ha? Consistent si teacher sa pagpapakita uh, ng, uh, ng, uh, mga, ng, ng mga stimuli na yun, no? yung, yung uh, pagiging warm, pagiging caring, those things nakalagay doon sa question. Balik tayo doon. Balikan natin. Um, the teacher is consistent. The teacher is consistent in its manner. All right. So in that case, that is operant conditioning because operant conditioning has uh, what you call the schedules of reinforcement. Reinforcement and uh, a fixed interval is one of the schedules. Diba? Apat yan, fixed interval, fixed ratio, uh, intermittent interval, and intermittent ratio. Right? When we talk about fixed interval, uh, it is a schedule that provides a reward at a consistent time. Right? So that's quite tricky, pero dahil may salitang consistent doon sa question, uh, automatically it should be. Uh, operant condition. Let's move on. After just being introduced to another guest in the party, Bob cannot remember the name of the guest he was introduced to. In what memory stage was the information stored in? Episodic, semantic, sensory, or working memory?
Okay, uh, let's check first the chart view. Okay, um, happy, no? Hindi nagsabi na ako yung so, hindi ko yung nagsabi ng sensor niya. Pero ano nga, ba, talaga, uh, if Bob cannot remember the name of the guest, he was going to just do uh, uh, memory uh, stage na uh, store yung mga information na yun. Bakit ang bilis niyang makalimutan? So, uh, reveal the correct answer now. Oh, 6 versus 6. Ma'am Ethel Rose pa rin, nangunguna. Second place, LPT Top 1. Correct answer is sensory memory. So, narinig niya lang. Sensory means it meaning senses. So, nakita niya yung mukha. Uh, narinig niya yung pangalan. Pero uh, madali niya nga nakalimutan no? yung uh, information na yun. So, sensory memory is the shortest term element of memory. It is the ability to retain impressions of sensory information after the original stimuli have ended. Okay, so, nakita niya lang yung itsura, uh, narinig yung pangalan, pero uh, dahil madali niya nakalimutan yung information na yun, uh, it was only stored in the shortest term element of memory, which is the sensory memory. Nagamit lang yung mata, nagamit lang yung uh, pandinig o yung tenga, pero hindi talaga siya na-process ng maigi para uh, mapunta uh, sa, sa mas mahabang uh, uh, longer term uh, element of memory or the LPM, a long term memory. Kaya sa sensory memory lang siya na store. Madali niyang lahat. O ganun ang nangyari doon. So next question. Uh, 15 minutes. Yeah. Ito na natin ng content. Vygotsky or Lev Vygotsky claimed that social interaction is important for learning. Does this imply Children are independent problem solvers. Children learn from adults and other children. Children learn by passive presentation of information. Or children in the crib has no learning yet since they are not capable of interaction. Vygotsky, or Lev Vygotsky claim that social interaction is important for learning. What does this imply? Children are independent problem solvers. Children learn from adults and other children. Children learn by passive presentation of information. Children in the crib has no learning yet since they are not capable of interaction. Again, sinasabi ni Lev Vygotsky na importante, mahalaga ang interaction, social interaction para sa pagkatuto. Ano ang ibig sabihin mo? Okay, let's reveal the answer. Pero tignan natin ang chart view. Okay. A lot of you said uh, children learn from adults and other children. Let's see if that is the correct answer.
Okay. The correct answer is letter B. So kahit kanino pa nakipag-interact ang isang learner, ang isang bata, whether sa adult or sa kapwa niya bata, there is a learning environment provided for the child. Okay. There is a learning experience provided for the learner. Yun yung sinasabi ni, I'm sorry, Lev Gotsky tungkol sa social interact. Uh, every time a child or a person interacts uh, with another person, whether it be an adult or another child or uh, anyone who is uh, uh, capable of uh, social interaction, there is a learning environment provided for him or her. So, kapag kasi nabing social interaction, according to Vygotsky in 1978, much important learning by the child occurs through social interaction with a skillful tutor. The tutor may model behaviors and or provide verbal instructions for the child. Vygotsky refers to this as cooperative or collaborative dialogue. Next question. <laughs> Would you help a student who is intelligent but is underachieving in class? How would you help a student who is intelligent but is underachieving in class? A. Provide challenging activities which he or she can accomplish. B. Recognize his talents by asking him or her to help other students with their work. C. Identify the immediate causes of difficulties that cause his or her being an underachiever. Or D, allow him or her to work with the slow learner to go to the academic needs of the lesson. Ang ganda lahat ng sagot, no? Pero ang uh, sitwasyon dito is underachieving yung estudyante, pero uh, records show that he or she is intelligent. So ano ang gagawin Okay, the correct answer should be uh, letter C. You should identify the immediate causes. Ano ito, ha? Uh, immediate concern ito. If, if the student uh, who is uh, expected to achieve uh, with high grades or at least reasonable grades, no? kasi matalino siya, uh, and uh, eventually, mababa ang uh, nakukuha niyang mark sa klase, sa, sa iba't ibang subjects, uh, this is of immediate concern. All right, and the, the the first thing that you have to do is to identify the causes of difficulties. Uh, I can still remember when I was still in Pasig Catholic College when I was a young counselor uh, back then. Uh, meron kami program. Uh, shout out to the Pasig Catholic College uh, staff, teachers, faculty members, everyone there. Uh, uh, may maganda kami programa na uh, ibinabahagi. Para sa mga estudyante at mga magulang. Meron kami program doon sa Pasig Catholic College. Uh, ang tawag doon ay home visitation program. No? Binibisita namin yung mga bata and um, uh, we classify our learners according to, to how they uh, perform and how they behave in, in the class. 
meron kami doong uh, classification na underachiever because the guidance uh, center there gives uh, mental ability test to all students. And uh, kinocompare namin yung uh, resulta ng mental ability test nila sa grades nila. So kapag ka mataas ang mental ability test nila, meaning they they have the gift. So matatalino ito. And when they uh, get low marks mga subject nila, they are considered as underachiever. Kasi matalino sila, pero mababa yung grades. So ang ginagawa namin, pinupuntahan ka agad namin sa bahay. Initita namin sila sa, sa bahay, ini-interview namin yung mga magulang. Uh, same time, nagbibigay kami ng counseling uh, session uh, doon sa bata. And we are trying to know uh, the, the causes. Yan, yun. Kailangan makita, kailangan malaman agad yung dahilan kung bakit uh, nagkakaganoon ang uh, learner, ang estudyante. Because you cannot help the student uh, properly if you are blindsided with uh, the reasons kung bakit siya nahihirapan. Right? So immediate concern ito. Uh, you are expecting that the student should achieve high grades but uh, because of something that is still unknown to us, hindi maganda yung grades niya. So anong dahilan? Diba? Anong dahilan? So kailangan mong malaman ka agad. Huwag mong maganda yung A, B, at D. Maganda lahat niya. Pero nagawa ka muna ng uh, assessment diba? para matulungan mo talaga ng maigi yung estudyante. Alright? So we're down to the last question. We will not be able to finish this. So on my next schedule with you, tatapusin natin itong uh, uh, quizzes activity na to. Alright. Last question. Mrs. Corpus always makes sure that her preschool classroom is well organized and clean. She puts up interesting and colorful visuals on the bulletin boards. What principle of motivation apply? Incentives motivate learning. Internal motivation is longer lasting and more self directive than is internal motivation. Motivation is enhanced by the way in which instructional material is gathered together. Or, the environment can be used to focus the student's attention on what needs to be learned. Again, this Corpus always makes sure that her preschool classroom is well organized and clean, and she puts up interesting and colorful rituals on the way it works. What principle of motivation must apply? environment can be used uh, to focus the student's attention. Uh, six said motivation is enhanced by the way in which uh, instructional uh, 
All right, let's end the question now. We don't have enough time. I'm sorry about that. Sorry, I, I'm having a problem with uh, my laptop. Uh, Miss Ethel Rose is the winner for this uh, activity. Correct answer should be letter D. All right. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, tapos na natin. Ah, sa mami natin discuss. Ah, in this one, no. Uh, the question is. Uh, anong principle of motivation was applied? No? Mrs. Corpus always makes sure that her preschool classroom is well organized and clean. Doon pa lang, no? that, napakita na doon, the environment can be used to focus the student's attention on what needs to be learned. Kasi may mga colorful visuals, uh, may, may interesting uh, 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 visuals on the bulletin boards. Uh, doon pa lang, pinapakita na ni teacher, ni Mrs. Corpus, na uh, just by looking at the learner's environment, no? uh, uh, pinapakita na doon ni, ni teacher na yung, yung mga nakikita ng mga estudyante niya uh, can be used for, uh, for learning experience. Right? So that's why the correct answer should be letter D. The environment can be used to focus the student's attention so just by looking at colorful visual aids, uh, bulletin boards na uh, interesting makukuha na kagad yung attention ng uh, estudyante, especially for the preschool uh, pupils, and uh, the learning experience can start with that. All right. Now, uh, we have to end. We have to end uh, this uh, review. All right. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who joined uh, the quizzes activity. Um, uh, just uh, to give you a simple message before we part ways. No? Um, just like what the behaviorists said, uh, about learning, the environment is important. Whether the student is gifted with intelligence or the student needs guidance and attention uh, whenever he, he or she is uh, trying to learn new things, it is our duty as teachers uh, to give the best, the nicest learning environment for them. Again, sinabi ng behaviorist, uh, uh, theorists, no? mga behavioral uh, theorists, behaviorism, sinabi dyan na hindi masyadong mahalaga yung, yung uh, genetic makeup ng isang uh, mag-aaral, ng isang uh, bata, ng isang tao na sumututo. Ang mahalaga, yung paligid niya. And uh, as teachers, uh, we have the role to make the learning environment better for them. With that, I would like to thank everyone, uh, Facebook Live viewers and uh, Zoom participants for joining this review. I hope you learned uh, at least some uh, important theories and applications to learning. And uh, I hope those things would help uh, for you to take the LET or the LET with ease. Uh, Maraming salamat at mabuhay kayong lahat.